let's look at this existing class here, which is question. So this code, this is the code that's part of your, your repository already. Um, we have a, a class called question. There are two instance variables, both of type string, a text and an answer. <coughs> Think of text as like the prompt um, that, that we pose to like the student and the answer is like the answer to that question that we can check to see if they're right. Um, this class has a couple of constructors. It has a default constructor, um, which means there are no parameters. So it's just gonna leave both those strings set to null. Um, it has another constructor that takes a single parameter of type string, which is the question text for the question. Um, it could set that instance variable directly, but instead it calls its mutator method, uh, which is best practice, and we'll see why that's important later. Um, it has a mutator method to set the question text. It takes a single parameter. It has a mutator method to set the answer. Um, it has a check answer method where you pass in like the student's response and see if it equals the stored answer. Um, and then it has a two string method that would simply return the question text that you could use as like a prompt or something. So this class is fine just by itself, right? We could write a very simple like quiz program <coughs> based on this question class that asks the students questions, prompts for answers, compares the answers and so on and so forth. Um, but what if we want a different type of question, okay? What if we want to do like a fill in the blank question where somewhere in the question text, there'll be a blank and the answer is what we expect um, to go in that blank. Um, a lot of what we have here makes sense. It's still going to have a question text. There's still going to be an answer. Um, we still need to manage both of those instance variables. We still want to check the answer. We still want to print out, like return a string for the question. So much of this code is the same. We just need to tweak a couple of things for this new behavior. And that's where inheritance is perfect. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So in our BlueJ project, let's make a new class called fill in question. And I'm gonna drag it over here by the other question classes. And at some point, we're going to need to use a scanner object. So let's import that class now so we don't need to worry about it later. So at the very top, do import java.util.scanner. And then let's update the description for how this class is going to, what is the behavior of this class? So a fill in question is constructed with a string that contains the answer surrounded by the underscore character. Let me make that more concrete. For example, here's an example. The inventor of Java is, and then we'd have the underscore character, we'd have the answer, James Gosling, and another underscore character. So the underscores delineate the answer in the fill in the blank question. So basically when we make a new fill in question, we can specify just this, and it's really both the question text and the answer combined. To be clear, like when we prompt the student though, the question should be displayed as the inventor of Java is, and then like a blank that they fill in. So this is what this is what we're going for. Um, and so we can see that a lot of the question class is already just fine, but we need to modify the behavior slightly because we're going to need to extract the answer from the question text um, so that we don't actually store the answer in the question text. That would make the quiz really easy. So, all right, so first things first, 
because the question class, because fill in question is just a specialized version of question, we are going to say that the fill in question class extends the behavior of um, other ways that we, we use, other ways we phrase this is we'd say the fill in question class is a subclass of. Or sometimes we say it is derived from, okay, the question class. So I share all these phrases with you because you might hear these any of these combination of terms. You might hear that this one class extends another class. You might hear that this one class is a subclass of another class, or this one class is derived from another class. Even in like AP free response question prompts, you might see a combination of all of these. So whenever you see any of these phrases, you should be thinking, oh, inheritance. This is all about inheritance. Okay. I like the word extends because the key word, the reserved word we used in Java to specify that the fill in question class extends it is where, right in the class header here. We say public class fill in question, just like always. And then we say extends. That's our new reserved word. It's red. What class does it extend? It extends the question class. Simply by adding these two words, we have just inherited all of the instance variables, the text and the answer instance variables from the question class, but they're still private. We can't directly get at them, but they're part of our class. And we've inherited all of those methods that we looked at in the question class. We have access to all of them. Okay. So we basically just get all that code for free. All we have to focus on is what specialized behavior, what change in behavior do we need? And that's all we have to worry about. The first thing we focus on are instance variables. But we have to be very careful with the question we ask ourselves. We have to ask ourselves, are there any additional instance variables we need to define because we've already inherited the text and answer instance variables? Now, what's going to happen is throughout this unit, you'll be writing code in your subclass and you will try to directly reference an inherited instance variable like text or answer, but they're private. And so it's not going to compile. And you need to resist every urge to go into your subclass and just say, oh, it's so easy. If I just type private string, what was it called? Text. If I just add that in, everything compiles, and it does, and Java lets you shoot yourself in your foot because it's not going to work. You've just declared a second instance variable, okay? So this is definitely worth a comment. Do not, this is a warning, do not declare the instance variables text and answer. The text and answer instance variables variables are inherited from the question class. So resist that urge. Instead, use the accessor and mutator methods. Okay. In this particular case, fill in question doesn't need any additional instance variables. The one we inherit are just, just fine. There's no additional properties associated with a fill-in question. So we're not going to de declare any additional ones. We do need a constructor. Um, we don't need a default constructor. We need a constructor that takes a single parameter, which is the question with the embedded answer. So let's actually document what that means. So this method constructs a fill-in question object with the specified text that contains the answer. So inside of this string is not only the question text, but also the answer altogether. So we better document that parameter, which is question, and it will be clear that the it is the specified question text with an embedded answer. Oops. 
Sorry. So something that you might have started thinking about is like, wait, how, how do these constructors work when we have a subclass? Um, because the subclass is certainly can use stuff from the parent class, but we don't want the subclass to start to use these inherited things until the superclass, oh, I already said the wrong word, I said parent, but until the superclass has a chance to initialize everything. So it's really important in our constructor that the superclass constructor has an opportunity to initialize stuff first, and Java actually enforces that. Okay, so we have a couple of different things we can, we can do. If we look at the question class, we'd be totally fine if this constructor ran um, and it calls like the set text method with a question. We just kind of need to change the behavior of set text to extract that answer out, right? We don't want to leave that in there. Um, but we'd like this constructor to be called. And here's how we do that. So when it comes to writing the subclass constructor, we have two options. We're going to do the first option. So let's focus on that first. The first option, and the one we're going to do, is we are going to explicitly, explicitly call the question classes constructor that takes a single parameter. And here's a rule that Java has, and it enforces because it wants to make sure that the subclass doesn't do anything until the superclass is initialized. Calling a superclasses constructor must be the first line of code in the subclasses constructor. And here's how we do that. We want to call to the superclass, and so we use another Java reserved word for that. And that reserved word conveniently is super. So we say super, and then in parentheses, we pass whatever parameters we want to pass along to the superclasses constructor. We're going to see tomorrow that super is actually used in a couple different ways in Java, but for for now, we're just focused on this first approach where it's the word super followed by parentheses and it calls the super class constructor. So this is the approach we're taking in this case, but I said there were two options. What's the second option? Um, we'll add is just a comment here. If we don't explicitly call a super classes constructor, Java will automatically call the super classes default constructor. By default, again, I mean no parameters, which kind of makes sense because what parameters would it pass, right? Call the super classes default no parameters constructor if it can. There are cases where it can't, but if it can. All right, we're gonna pause here and tomorrow we'll focus on, okay, how do we override a method? What does that look like? What's the syntax for that?